Okay, good morning chat. Let's double check that everything works. Let's double check that everything works. Sounds good to me. Alright, let's just get started right away. Today we are starting with a bronze for review from uh Dubaister Ledger. I think that's how you pronounce that. Let's just get started right away. So they say they are a Hanzo and a Senmei. Which means they play one for snipers. So we're looking a lot at positioning and your number seven. Alright. So looking at your team, you have a lot of spam damage with Sigma, so you can take a very slow, let's burn them down angle. At least that's a general idea you can have at the beginning, then you'll notice that they also have like a lot of spam damage and double shield rather than Sigma Saria. So at that point you probably want to look for an off angle. Five, By which I mean uh, you don't want to just be shooting down main. Like they are said they have this setup for example, which they shouldn't be holding this far forward, it's very far forward. They should be holding like all the way back here because uh, you can just, uh, on this angle you can just come this way. You can have enough angle here, or you can have enough angle here. You come around, you just shoot them, and you will do a lot of damage, maybe kill someone. That's the general idea. <clears throat> but I imagine since you're playing, like your rating is actually at 900, you're pretty low. There has to be some major issue here, other than uh, conceptualizing what the game should be. So let's look for those. Like very glaring. Okay, so here's a problem. You are doing nothing. I know that the lower you get in rating, the slower the pace of the game is. Like at the highest rank, uh, fights will be won or lost in literally one second or less. At this rank, you probably will not. Like everyone will be very slow. Rotations will be slow. Team will move very slowly. Even you here, you're just like very slow in your rotations, you're doing very little. This is a good angle play, yeah, yeah, and this is good. Again, you would probably want to be here instead, because high ground is very important. High ground is just free cover, right? If someone tries to shoot at you, you just take a step back and they can no longer shoot at you. And here you have some cover. You're gonna tell me, but hey, I have cover here too, I can play with this. Yeah, but they have a Jangrat. Which just means that Jangra can spam you out. Jangra, you know, can shoot at very tight corridors like this and do a ton of damage. So yeah, right now the biggest thing I'm noticing is that your rotations are just very slow. You are moving very slowly. Your aim is not that bad, like... From these few shots, you landed most of them. Which is fine, and you killed the Risa, which is good. You get out, which is fine. Come back to your team for healing. This is this has not been bad. You have a lot of downtime, which is a big problem. Downtime. Just to say, time where you are, uh, you have a lot of time when you are just not doing anything. Like right now, yeah. Okay, you missed most of those shots, but slow down a little. Even you, even you pressuring this angle is taking the attention away, so it's okay. Lucius coming for you. Lucius not a big problem. He doesn't really do enough damage to bother you. Like, he can chase you out, but yeah, you shouldn't die to Lucian. This is okay. Like, this looks like a... Oh, really? This looks like you guys just cap first point at, with this win. Lucian can be very annoying if you just don't know how to aim at him. Well, riding is annoying. Yeah, don't worry about it. Just, yeah, focus on the other people. Lucian's not your target. Oh, well. Yeah, Lucian's not your target. Everyone else in their team is easier to shoot at than Lucia. Even Echo is easier to shoot at than Lucia. Because when she's flying in the air, she actually has a very big hitbox. And this is not bad, you're taking off angles. That's why I haven't noticed anything terrible. Your aim with Tormarus could be a bit better. Um, use them for cleanup more than anything else. Good shot. And did the Echo just kills everyone? I guess that's a problem, right? right now you don't have anyone in your team that can deal with Echo. I also don't expect Echo to just be free to do anything she wants. 
But Echo can still be very annoying. And yeah, here she, she, she just kills two people like for free because she's Echo. So this should have been a one fight, but because the pace is so slow, um, we just let them come back and just win, rather than focusing on someone down and killing them. Which is not entirely your fault. Right now, again, the biggest thing I can tell you is to move faster, do things faster. You'll surprise the enemy. Because, again, if your team is moving very slow, the enemy team is also moving very slow. So if you make a fast rotation, wait for a little bit while they don't know where you are and make sure you land that one's first shot, then you just get a ton of value. You're trying to group up with your team, which is fine. Uh, usually, if they have a shield in the way, that's a great eye, of course. If they have a shield, uh, that's your best use for Storm Arrows, because Storm Arrows does like 375 damage in one second. So it is actually a, a pretty big damage burst. I believe technically it's like 1.25 seconds. Yeah. So if they have this shield, you can break the shield with Storm Arrows. By using Storm Arrows, like this shield is low, it's a... 80 health, okay. Of course you can break it, but uh, if you see cracks in any shield, you can throw your Storm Arrows at it to break it in like one second. Even Ryan's shield, at, if it has cracks, it's at 800. So you, you using Storm Arrows will take it down to 400 and at that point you just kill it very, very fast. They have no tanks. Again, don't play on the front line. Like, don't do this. Like, you weren't doing this before. You are now. Like, the first couple of fights, you fought from here, you fought from here, you fought from here. You fought from here as well. This fight, like, look what you are. You're just in the front line. I think you just saw, oh, they have no tanks. I can run at them. You cannot. They still have a lot of damage. Don't run in the front line. Even here, you are a little too close. Remember, you are a sniper. Now they are using the tides behind you. Okay, that's not too bad. Uh, you should, if you had hit one more of those, the echo would be dead. You got the point, which is, you know, the call of the point, the call of the game. So I guess overall, improve, working on your Storm Arrows may help you a lot because you're missing a lot of them. And I have the, like, let me just, how far am I? 3 minutes 20. So Storm Arrows are actually really, really good for cleaning up targets. They do 70 damage each. I believe, I can double check that real quick. I'm just gonna double check that real quick. Uh, Storm arrows, yeah, they do 70 damage each, which can headshot. Usually doesn't, unless you're pretty good with them. But if you're playing Hanzo, the idea is first Sonic Arrow. You're not using Sonic Arrow a lot, and I'm not looking for you to use Sonic Arrow a lot. Like that comes a little bit later. Right now, I just want you to focus on your basics, which would be first thing first, play far away, take high ground. Because when you're in high ground, it's harder for the enemy to shoot at you. And you can just shoot at them, shoot at them, right? You can shoot at them for free, and if someone threatens you, you just do this. Or you do this, and you're safe. Like, people who were down there cannot see you anymore. And people who are right after you cannot see you as soon as you take further steps back. Like, the closer to an edge you are, and the closer to the edge the enemy is, the more they have to go away into the open for you to just shoot at them. One important thing that like I was saying is that Storm Arrows is really good cleanup. It's not gonna kill this one, it's gonna leave it at 5 HP, but it's very important that you practice your cleanup with Storm Arrows because that's what it's really good for. Like, hold on, just get them back. Rather than just, you are doing this, you are just shooting them all at once, which would be fine if you were shooting them at a shield or at a tank, because you can most you can usually hit most of those shots. If you have a monkey jumping you and he lands in front of you and you just go, oh, I leap back, I storm arrows the monkey, I'm going to hit most storm arrows and with like one or two headshots the monkey is dead, because that's just how storm arrows works. But if you if you have like a moving target, let me just get to you up here. If you have a moving target, it can be a little harder to hit them if you just hold down the button of Force Storm Arrows. So you should be fine with just taking a second to aim. 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 
right? Don't just all like you have enough time to use them. The big advantage of storm arrows is burst damage, but you can only use this burst damage against like very big targets where you are basically guaranteed to hit all of them. If you have a monkey, you just shoot the monkey and kill him. But if you have like a tracer or a, or a, I don't know maybe a pharaoh in the air. You don't want to just shoot at all of them like I'm going to take a random chance at hitting them because Tornos is actually really good. It basically makes your arrows hit scan. So you can be like, uh, okay, if someone is low, like not that low because no. if someone is low, what I'm going to do is I'm playing here, I see that someone's low, storm arrows, and then it is a that. You just kill them. And you see someone slow, you just go, oh, I killed them. Right? That's the idea with Storm Arrows. It's not just shoot all of your arrows at random people in, hey, hey, maybe I'll hit one. Because for that, you can actually do more damage with a single arrow if you use your normal bow. Like, if you're just taking a chance that you'll kill someone, just shoot your bow because it just does more damage, right? It's 125 with headshots against 70 without headshots. You need to actually hit three of them to kill someone or two and a headshot. Whereas with normal arrows, you only need two or one headshot. So, normal arrows are better if you're just trying to hit someone in ra randomly. Unless they are low. If they're low, just hit one more to get them very low enough. If they're low, if they have like only, like, hold on, let me just real quick. This one would not. There. You can see that they have eight. I just killed them. Give me soldier. If you see that they have eight 25 health sections, each of those is 25. So if they are missing, like here, they are missing 60, 90, 120, right? You can see how it's 75 and a little bit over. So if they have two or two and a little bit, they have under 70 health, which means you just pop them once and they are dead. Pop them once and they are dead, right? Not this one, this one just is wrong. But if someone is under 70 health, which is, look at that, 40 health, right? Well, yeah, something like 40 health. Just pop them once and they're dead, and that's the idea. They are really good for cleanup, but they actually make it harder to kill squishy targets. Like for big targets, like monkey, maybe Rothog, right? You can be like, okay, I'm going to, I see a, I see a Rothog. I'm going to take one shot, then storm arrows, and he's dead. Because why why did I take one shot? Because the one shot before Storm Arrows is free. There is no reason not to take one shot. Like just even if you see them around you, you can be like, Oh, I see them. Shot, then Storm Arrows. Because you can always have a short charge. You should, in fact, always have a short charge with hand, so it doesn't make you slower. It doesn't really change your gameplay at all, so always charge your shots. But yeah, if you see someone low, you just storm arrows them. If someone is at full health, it is actually harder. To kill them with storm arrows, unless you have them down really well. So all of that to say, um, save your storm arrows for when people are like really, for when people are like kind of low, so you can clean up and just confirm the kills rather than just randomly using them to try to get a kill. I think we were at three minutes. Yeah. Like, and I can show you that again here. She's not low enough to kill with a storm arrow, but she's actually low enough to kill with a normal arrow. So you are making it your harder for yourself to kill the Echo. You would only need one shot normally. And yeah, I know you are taking five shots over the course of, again, 1.25 seconds. But the chances of hitting this just randomly is pretty low. And you're just holding down the left click in. Well, maybe I'll hit one, which doesn't happen because of course it doesn't. I, I can actually show you. You pop Storm Arrows here, uh, and your first shot goes wide, your second shot heads, okay, then you miss, then you miss, then you miss. Again, it's not that easy to just randomly shoot at someone and kill them with Hanser. I know sometimes it happens, but especially with Storm Arrows, you are actually making it harder for you. If that arrow had been a normal arrow, she probably wouldn't have died anyway. But if you had hit with a normal arrow, then storm arrows. Like, if you storm arrows, you can probably hit one arrow, right? 
like just randomly spamming someone, you can hit one arrow. You'll probably not hit more than one if you are just randomly spamming. If you wait, aim, then shoot, you can hit more than one. But if you just randomly spam at someone, you can pro you can pretty confidently, like pretty consistently, hit one arrow out of five. Wait, as you found, you just kill them. Like if you hit a normal arrow for 125, then one for 70, they are down to five HP, and you just kill them with melee. Or your team kills them or whatever. Like look at the jungle. If you have storm arrows, then this would be a great situation to kill the jungle rat. Like, what's this Storm Arrows about? Sarya is not an... Like, I know I said tanks earlier, but Sarya is actually one of the smaller tanks. And you just die. And they just retake. But we just got the point, so it doesn't matter. The children don't read is that... Right now, the biggest things I'm concerned about is that you are frontlining a lot. Uh, you didn't do this in the first couple fights, but in the last two fights, you were just running at them. Running at the Sarya, instead of staying back and doing damage, you were just running at them. Like, why, why go through here? Stay here, shoot from here, you can shoot at the point as well. You can be safe if you play with cover, right? Like, this is very important. Um, angle picking with Hanzo is very important. And I don't think it's something that you should worry a lot about at your rank, but it may give you a slight bit of an edge where you just play from here. Because with this cover, like, you can shoot over there. And while you're shooting over here, you are safe from that angle. Or you can shoot at, from, uh, at the point, right? And while you're shooting at the point, you're safe from this angle. Unless someone literally chases you on top, but that's why you put like a sonic arrow here. And if someone tries to come this way, you just see them. And if you really want to, then you can go even more aggressive and take an even more aggressive angle on the point. Because what you are what you're doing is you start out here, which is really good. If the enemy goes back, then you move. Where do you move? Probably here. Maybe you can go here. Here's good. You can take an angle on like that line of sight. A little bit of that, and if you really have to, you have first you have a mini, but also from here you can just see the point. So positioning is really important, stay far away. Uh, you are not like a frontline hero with Hanzo, with Zen, with Anna. All of those want to be as far away from the enemy as possible. Like Anna, Zen, Ash. Please ignore my absolutely terrible handwriting. Let's try again. Anna, Sen, Widow, Ash, and Hanzo all want to stay far away from the enemy. You don't want to be close, you want to be like sniper, 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 sniper. They're all snipers. You want to be like literally as far away as you want as you can. That's why they're really good because they can get a lot of value from very far away where it is very difficult for anyone but like very high mobility or uh, other long range heroes to, well, get them. That's a kill. This you can storm arrows, right? You have an Orisa in front of you, you are very likely to hit all five arrows, maybe four, but you, if you're very likely to hit all five, you just pop storm arrows and do 375 damage immediately. And that's exactly what you do and you just kill her. Good job. So that's a great situation for storm arrows. If you were shooting at the shield, you do the same, because you are not going to miss at the shield. You are not going to miss at a melee range monkey, at a melee range Orisa. So Storm, Storm Rouse is a really good burst of damage against tanks and shields. Other than that, you are just taking a Lark and at an outside chance that more than one of your arrows will hit your target. That's a good shot. Like, you could have tried to follow this up with Storm Arrows. Because now she's down to 75 HP. 68, actually, she had already taken some damage. And you could just kill her. Like, look at this. You're over there. Good shot, not a headshot. Unfortunately, if, if, if it had been a headshot, she would be dead. But she has, she's forced to retreat, and you could actually chase that. She doesn't have a mercy. If Echo or Farah has a mercy, then by the time you chase, she's probably healed back up. But you could, like, try to... Yeah, like, this, like I said... If you can consistently hit one out of five arrows, which is, I wouldn't say expected, like I would expect most people to be able to hit one out of five arrows, this is a good cleanup. Like she's got two and a little, like you can see the bars over here. You know you did at least one shot with your arrow, which is 125. So it's very likely that your storm arrows will kill the psycho. So pop your storm arrows, 
again, if one storm arrow will would just kill the target, it's probably better for you to storm arrows because you have a higher chance to hit with storm arrows than without them, if only because again, you are just shooting five. Even though it's less damage and you have to hit more of them. Good shot though. Like they got instant still, but good shot. Again, like look at this guy. How much health does he have? 50, 125. So even though you are using Storm Arrows, and you may kill him anyway if you hit a few of them, you would be better off just normally shooting at him. Gosh, hold on. So, with one single arrow, you will not kill him, but you will not kill him with a Storm Arrow. You can kill him if you hit two Storm Arrows, but at that point you just have to actually hit two Storm Arrows. You pop Storm Arrows, shoot, shoot, shoot. You hit one, you do hit two, which, well done. He did just back out, like, in a single line, rather than dodging it anyway, but, you know. Well done still, but if you had hit one normal arrow instead, you would have gotten it down to like 6 HP, at which point you just can Storm Arrows if you really want to. Uh, or you can just go up on the, to him and melee him, or just, you know, let your team kill him, because he's got 6 HP. But the idea, the idea I'm trying to convey is... You are basically using this like a... Uh, kind of like a machine gun, right? You're trying to take a million, as many shots as possible without aiming with the hope that some of them will kill. And sometimes they do. And again, because you're taking basically five chances, usually you'll get one of them. Sometimes you may get two. It's very rare that you'll get three or more unless the person's standing still. Uh, so, save Storm Arrows for when you can basically guarantee that one shot will kill. Or again, against tanks you can hit most of them, because tanks Tanks are just much bigger. Or Doomfist. Doomfist also has a very big hitbox. Again, you have a lot of downtime. Also, check your noises. Like, I could hear the Lucio to my right. Another Storm Arrow attempt at just randomly. So right now what I'm telling you is use Storm Arrows to a little bit more sparingly, your normal shots do more damage. Uh, play a bit safer, like this is not a bad position. You are in the high ground, you have some cover, you can see everything. But if someone chases you, you have to drop, that's what you usually do. Rather than just backing out, just drop from the high ground. Because if they chase you, you just climb back up coming in. Like, climb back up again, that's the way you usually do this with Hansa. If you are on a high ground, let's just say, let's go back to first. Let's say you're playing this high ground on defense, right? And they have a monkey, like a, a, a Winston, right? The Winston jumps at you, and you are like, Oh, I, I'm going to, first, I'm going to leap away to create immediate distance. Like, the monkey lands here, and you're here. I'm going to just leap away, probably stay in the high ground, uh, for a little second, because I want to storm out with the monkey. If the monkey puts the bubble down, I just drop. Immediately, because I cannot, like, even if I break the the bubble with Storm Arrows, at that point I just don't get value. So, again, if Monkey lands, and you're here, first instinct is just leap away, like, jump up and then jump backwards. And then, if the Monkey hasn't used bubble, you can go for the Storm Arrows. To usually just force him to use the bubble. If not, then you just are here now. Here, here, you just drop from the high ground. Because the monkey had to use a cooldown to engage, a 6 second leap cooldown. So if he drops, you can just climb back up and be like, okay, the monkey is here now. I can shoot at the monkey if I have to. And I'm safe. So if people come to you, like if you're taking the high ground, and this is why high ground can be so very important, you are very good at long range. And if someone comes to you by using a cooldown, like high mobility heroes, for example, come to you by using a cooldown, you can just drop, force them to chase by taking a safe position. Like if a monkey is here, then you can be here or here. Monkey has to be really close. If they have like an echo, you can just be like here. Try to force it to drop by using your angles. Right? <clears throat> and when they drop, you can just climb back up. Because you have a 
vertical movement cooldown, which in your case is just wall climb. And then you're back up here, and the Echo is here, or the Monk is here, or maybe the Diva is over there, or doesn't matter. You, you get the point I'm trying to make. You want to have this because it allows you to... Uh, you can basically go down and up again very easily, whereas people have to use cooldowns. And if they don't deal with you here, you can just do a ton of damage this way, this way, get angles, get kills, etc. All of that to say, um, here, this is, again, this is fine. You get attacked and instead of dropping, which again, the right idea is just drop, just drop. You can even climb wall a little bit if you really have to, but again, it's better to just drop. Uh, you just shoot at them, and you go this way. And the problem with this is that you have no escape. Like, how are you going to, like, this is your only escape. You're basically going like, I have 40 HP, I'm going to kill Lucio and the, and the Chankrat by myself with 40 HP. And you're not going to do that. You're just going to die. <clears throat> so again, if you see people coming this way, you should drop. Because basically, like, especially... <clears throat> Jangrad, he has to use cooldowns to get back up, and you can just climb back up for free. Here, just that. Still should be a way of fight. Also, I like that the Jangrads were standing side by side and didn't do anything about it. A pirate and a clown. There must be some kind of peace treaty between them. <coughs> Jokes aside, yeah. You're coming back because you died. Did you not notice the echo right next to you? I noticed the echo right next to you. I see the echo. Shoot at the echo. I know she's full health. Again, first thing first. Always have a shot charged up. You don't here. So having a shot loaded up doesn't slow you down in any way, shape or form. Just have the shot already charged up when you turn around because it doesn't make you slower. But also, what are you doing? There's an echo right there. Maybe your awareness is really bad. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe you didn't hear the Lucio coming through or the jungle coming through. Maybe you didn't see the echo. Look around you a little bit more. Because again, there's just an echo right there. Now she's going away. But there was an echo you could have killed right there. I don't think you're in the child, which is unfortunate. I just wanted to ask whether you, well, had that or not. Okay, you use dragons. Let me look at that for a second. Okay, okay, okay. Now let me just pause the, my screen because it wasn't passed and it was consuming resources. Okay. So again, this rotation isn't a bad rotation. You are just very slow with it. Uh, you could just be like, instead of doing all of this, just climb up, climb up, and you're already up on the high ground. Very slow rotation. Use your movement. Use sneak around the payload. It, it misses the payload, unfortunately. And then you just drag us the payload? Which is an okay idea if you want to split the team, but the Sigma just, you know what? Sure, might as well. The reason I didn't like it is that your team is not pushing. If your team was pushing, this would be a good idea because you're forcing the enemy team into your team. In this case, you just got two kills, which is you no know, even better. Don't get, don't draw from the high ground though. Like, why did you draw? You can't shoot them from up here. In fact, it's easier. Well, I would argue it's easier to shoot them from up here. You have literally no pressure on you. Like maybe the echo can try to pressure you, but. Uh, and it's a lot easier for them to pressure you on the front line. So thus far, stop, stop. Front lining. Stop wasting storm arrows. Start. Taking. High ground. Uh, hold on, let's be a little clear with this. I'll take in cover. I'm 
and high ground. And start using your storm arrows for confirming. Alright, those are the big things right now. Good dragon, I would not have expected it to kill three people, but still good job. That's good, storm arrows at the shield, at the sigma, try to get value, that's fine. Like, if you have like this type of a corridor, yeah, of course. You are likely to hit more shots if you just have this type, kind of very long hallway with nowhere for them to move in the first place. We get the point, like, people forget about the point. It's not your job, but also I don't want you to be frontlining. Like, here you're frontlining. If your Sigma is here, you are frontlining. Good. Storm Rouse attempt. Um, I know you will hit two shots, but you know what? She got blown up anyway, and it was the right thing to do. You had basically a tank in front of you, your Storm Rouse, it's fine. Do you want to be, my next question is, do you want to be on the line of fire of this Jangrat? Jangrat is spamming main. They are on Jangrat. They have two Jangrats now because they copy that Jangrat as well. They are just spamming down main. Like, Jangrat just spams in one direction. What you should be doing is take high ground, take cover. Even if they spam up here, you can be here and be safe. Uh, you can take a step back, get the health back, come back and shoot at them. You can break this with melee. And from here, you can still shoot at everything. You don't have to be here to shoot at everything. With Hanzo, with Anna, with Sen, you want to be far away from people because you have no damage drop off, right? Like, no matter how far away you are, your damage, your shots, your healing with Anna is always the same. Instead, you're right up on the Jangrat's face. I'm guessing this is your problem, by the way. I guess, I'm guessing this is why you end up. Um, not getting value a lot of the time, you're just frontlining. Just get into the habit of being as far away as you can. Because that's just, just good. And yeah, you are very low, you just get killed. Like, the further away you are from the enemy, the safer you are. Right? If you are all the way over here, then who's gonna get to you? Maybe Echo if she uses a cooldown? Right? Echo can try to get up here with a cooldown. But then you can just go like, okay, I'm here now, I have a health pack, I can go back to my team, I have cover even from here, and if Echo tries to chase me again, my team can help me, or I can just kill her, because at this point she's by herself, and she has already used her cooldown. They're going back, this is a lost fight by the way, yeah. Lost fight, just regroup. Just die or get out, die or get out, die or get out, that's fine. Okay, you're just coming forward, this is fine. This is very risky. I do think off angles are good, but this is not an off angle, you are just going into the enemy team. An off angle in this case would be, I don't know. That there's really not great off angles on this particular one. But like, if they were holding here, you could go all the way around and from here, which is very far away, shoot at them from behind. And if they're holding here to, to come get you, they have to come all this distance. And even here, you can just be like, okay, I'm going to take this high ground instead and shoot at them, which is like another off angle, which I don't usually recommend. You go for this aggressive, this much of an aggressive play, right? But if you really, really feel like you can, then go for it. Come all the way around, there's a mega health pack right there. People don't know about this one, so I, I thought I would point it out. Like, a lot of people don't know that there's actually a mega health pack over there. Because this point doesn't have any other ones. Like, I know there's one over here. And there is uh, a mini over here. Is there a mini? What, did I, what, what am I saying? There's a mega over here as well. But people don't know about this one. People just think that the third corner, because 
first corner health pack, second corner health pack, and there is one on third corner as well. That aside, because I just wanted to point it out, this is just suicidal. And I would be surprised if you don't die. You don't die, they don't chase you. They instead just kill your daddy, but... Uh, yeah, don't do that. That's basically it. Your team is dead. Your team is dead. Just get out. Yeah. Okay, good. Oh, we've basically been... Okay. You are on the payload. I actually like this. You remember what I said about not having enough angle when the enemy team was holding here? Now you be, you did a smart thing. The enemy pushed too far forward and this became an option because you are now behind them. You are not just coming like literally in front of them or like the Sigma was literally here. He can just tool you. Now you are behind them and this is really good because if they want to get through this choke, you have the dragons. This is smart. I like it. Your team can push forward. That's really good. I don't think you need to storm arrows, but you know what? It's fine. You were shooting at the standing steel Orisa. There's no one there. Like, you know the entire team is here. Just turn around. Turn around. <laughs> oh my god, you're gonna die. You could have you could have been very good. Like, this is a good play. You killed your people. You broke the choke. That's good. I don't know why you're turning around. Like, you know the entire enemy team is here. One, two... One, two, three, four. All of them were here, right? This was very good. You got behind them, you surprised them, and they died. Like, I can guarantee this Arisa didn't even see it coming. Like, what's Arisa number three? Like, yeah, she heard the voice, and I heard the voice, and, but she had no idea where it was actually coming from. She just started taking damage, and then she's like, oh, crap, there's a dragon in front of me. She doesn't even fortify, which she should fortify, it's half damage, but... This was a really good play. <clears throat> and then you just threw it away. Why are you turning around? Like, you know the enemy is going to be coming now. Like, <laughs> the dragon made it pretty obvious where you were, so the enemy is going to be coming back. Just turn around, play safe, play, like, behind the payload, and shoot at them. Again, cover. The payload is also cover. And instead, just turn around and you're like, they are going to respawn immediately, but no. They take like 10 seconds to respawn. They will just 10 seconds to respawn and another 5 seconds to even get out of spawn. Like, making this walk out of spawn is actually like 1, 2, 3, 4 seconds out of spawn. Unless you have movement abilities. But then you can just like, you won the fight and then you suicide it. Because you could have been here, but it's safe. Looking at the Sigma camp, shoot at the Sigma. If Sigma gets too close, you can just leap out, climb, and be here again. Or you can just go this way and take this, or whatever you want. Just You forgot that the enemy team still existed behind you, basically. Um, and again, this may just be a matter, a matter of awareness. I feel like your awareness is really bad. Awareness. I feel like you're not listening. When we were on the bridge, I heard the Lucio coming up to you before you even noticed because the jungle just did damage to you. Um, when you were on the Echo, you didn't see the Echo. She was literally on your screen and you ignored the Echo. So I feel like your, your main issue may actually be an awareness issue. Your positioning needs work. Again, you need to stop frontlining. Um, your use of storm arrows can definitely use some more sonic arrow. Yeah, you're not using it right, but it's not going to make that big of a difference at this rank. Um, I I don't think I've seen you use sleep very often, but no, it's there. You go. You just used, um. <laughs> yeah, you're using it basically to get back a little faster or to get placed a little faster. It's a really good disengagement tool if someone is in your face, which is like this is why you can be really good against. Die, because someone dives, you just leap away. But they don't have dive, and you're kind of like just moving around. Here you can pop storm arrows and just shoot at the sigma, and if you miss, you'll hit a shield. So this is not too bad. You missed all of the shots, even on the shield. But you know what? I'm for it. It's fine. Good shot. And you die. And we just lose. 
go something faster, yeah, you just go Tracer, the right idea. So your game knowledge is not bad, like your game knowledge in the sense of um, <clears throat> taking high ground to take space and stuff like that. It's not bad, like your angles are pretty good, you have some decent ideas. I think it's mostly your positioning, like again, try to play with high ground, most importantly cover. High ground and cover are the two biggest things in this game. For DPS, for tanks, for anyone. You're playing up here, right? You're gonna tell me, but there's no cover. I don't have any cover up here. You do if you need it, you just do this. And you're safe. And you can be like, okay, I need healing. I drop, I get the health pack, then I just uh, climb back up and get back up. That's simple as that. This is your cover up here if you need it. Because, hold on, just. If you need it, because otherwise you just. Like, if they don't have anything that contests you, uh, let's say instead of an echo, they had a, I don't know, a Reaper. If they don't have anything that can contest you, you are safe here. You can shoot at them for free. And if they do some damage, you just do... Boop, I'm safe. You can even leap back if you really want to. Like, if you're playing very aggressively, you can be like, You know what? I'm just gonna leap back. And I'm safe. And if they die you, you just leap down. <coughs> so... High ground, very important, it prevents you from being even for free, because you can drop and climb back up. Um, it allows you to have cover from people who are below you, because if you are here, it's really difficult to shoot at people who are up there, especially if you take a step back, and they then have to go into the open to shoot at you. Like, yeah, they can kind of see you on the high ground from all the way back here, but they are, like, out in the open. Like, there's literally nothing for them to work with. And uh, those two things are just very important. High ground. And cover. For the same reasons. And you need to work on that a little bit. Like your position regarding high ground, cover, getting out, etc, etc. Um, your use of, like, positionally, I think you should be, like, Taking a high ground more, playing safer with cover, etc. Stop frontlining. Uh, because again, you're a sniper, you want to be far away. You do the same damage far away, you're up close. Uh, so that's for positioning. Mechanically. Uh, so positionally, high ground cover. Mechanically, storm arrows is very important. Stop just wasting them because there's so many in front of you. And awareness, like gameplay, game sense. It's probably just awareness. I don't know why, but you don't seem to notice people right in front of you sometimes, or you forget people where people are. And yeah, just, we just reach the point. You also play hands on defense. Where are you positioned? Where are you? Oh, I guess you want to take a storm arrow? Is that what you did? Did you just fall? You just fell, okay. You just fell, then you screw up your climb, and then you climb. Storm arrow ended up being a little late, and most importantly, now they know you're here. They saw you, you they know you're here. Knowing you're here is pretty bad because you don't have cover on this high ground, right? I know I've spoken a lot about high ground and cover, but those are the most important things. If you want to play on this high ground and have like a little bit of cover, you can play here instead. Because this side, allow again, it allows you to do damage. And if someone threatens you, you can just get out. The problem is that you're very diveable. Like, even Jungrat can get up here and chase you out. And again, so long as you know to just jump out, and in this case you don't climb back up, you just jump out and get out. Uh, and that's why, by the way, you don't usually hold this. Like, this is basically a very contested area. So if you try to climb back up, there will be someone else to contest you. In this case, if you run away from the Jankrat, then the Echo can come up here, or the Diva can come up here and take you out again. 
and when you drop down, you will not have your leap, or you will be harder to climb, or the jungler will have his cooldowns back to climb back. In either case, all of that to say, you are out in the open. You are very exposed. Again, this would be better, like this tiny corner will be better for cover. But you are very exposed. And yeah, you just have to give up the position immediately. And you basically use all of your cooldowns, so we got no value, and... You have to give up your position, and at this point, um, you are just shooting down main. You take a angle, I like it. This is risky. Like if they not, you cannot stay here forever. They have a Changrat, a Diva, a Echo who can contest you on this angle. So yeah, I like that you just get away. Just go away, go away. Great kill, like good use of Sonic Arrow. Good kill, well done. Storm Arrows the shield, well done. Because kinda behind you, be careful, like she's over there. You teleport back to point, and this is good! Like, look how much distance you put between you and them. And Diego's still here. If you want to go for it, I wouldn't recommend that. Focus on the team, focus on... Maybe ignore the Echo. If you don't think you can hit the Echo, play somewhere where the Echo can shoot at you, and just melt the team instead. But you have to be careful, especially when you take off angles, Echo can just... On the 1v1, Echo and Hanzo are a skill maze uh, 1v1. If you can hit the Echo, you will kill the Echo. But it's usually easier for Echo, because Echo has the stickies. She's got uh, spam projectiles, so she can put them down really, uh, really fast. Then she's also got a beam to clean you up if she does any damage. Echo's just an annoyance. Good kill. Echo above you, I just heard the shots, you saw the shots. Don't forget the Echo is like, I just saw the Echo shooting in front of you. I feel like your awareness is the biggest thing. Like here you see the Moira running away and you kill her. And your aim is not bad, like your aim is not pronged. I don't think your aim is the problem. Yeah, sometimes you are just holding left click when you storm arrows, which is not ideal. Unless you are going against the tank or a shield. But I feel like your awareness is just really bad. Like, you're kind of looking around, you go like, okay, there may be someone in front of me. It, it was actually the stickies that exploded you. Like, if you look at it from, like, a third-person perspective. The Mar I think the Mars just got very close and they did a little damage to you by a stickies. But you just saw the Echo shooting in front of you. So you know the Echo is behind you, you are just ignoring her. And she's just killing people. Good kill. Good shots. You should not be this close, but it's fine. The Echo, okay, that's fine. That's not, it's not Echo, it's someone else. I think the Mora was getting away. Yeah, it was. Maybe not. Okay. You guys, maybe you full hold this actually. Maybe you just lose first and full hold on second. Looks like a one game though. And you're doing pretty good. Like this is a pretty good game for you. Your aim is doing good. Maybe your aim is not consistent. Your awareness is really bad. Like I would really work on like looking around you more often because you are missing a lot of stuff. Your position gives you more. Like this is actually a really good position by the way. While we are at it. This is an excellent position, because you can spam them, you have cover, uh, they don't have any way to get to you very easily. I know it's not high ground, but how are they going to get to you? The only thing they can do is try to go for a very wide flank, and if they go for a very wide flank, you just do this. And you're safe. And if they split, you do like a very weird flank, like with one person flanking and one person pushing to main. Just focus on these people and you kill them. Or you can all turn around and shoot whatever your team is shooting and just kill them. No need to be this or back. You're actually using the teleporter pretty well. <clears throat> we grab dragons. Oh no! That was very uncoordinated. There, are yeah, they're not gonna die like that. And they, this is because we're just using the teleporter way in Italy. Right? That you missed this opportunity. I'm here in the game. Your side is going forward. You use the teleporter again, like, you have just used the teleporter. Like, use the teleporter here. 
you know there's no one on point, right? I, you just checked, there's no one on point. Two people are dead. You come back, and I'm like, okay, you know what? That's good. You check that there's no one behind you. That's fine. And then you do it again. When we're going for grab. If you're going, like, I don't think you need to grab dragons because two people are dead, but if you're going to, you shouldn't do this. Because now your, your, your dragon is going to be, like, late. The fight is already won. Like, by the time your dragons come in, they do literally nothing. We use Crawl Lessons instead, which wins us a fight, but... <clears throat> yeah, that, and again, that's awareness. That's a matter of awareness. You didn't realize that your side was going in, you didn't realize that there was still no one behind you. Object permanence, people that were not behind you and people who are in front of you are still in front of you. You checked already if there's someone behind you. Storm the Monkey, again, I showed that earlier, that's really good. <clears throat> Spamming is fine. Again, I like that you're taking like these little angle picks, which you don't always do this. Like a lot of the time you're just standing in the open and going into them, like literally in the middle of the enemy team. Play like this more. Play like this more. Like your defense play has actually been pretty solid, except for going away. Like even here, what are you doing? You were doing really good, spamming from long range, not letting anyone come close to you. And then you just expose yourself. Now you're exposed. You are in the middle of nowhere. You are very, very vulnerable. You try to storm out the monkey, you kill the monkey, good job. You could have died there though, like you went very low on HP. No one really, like, 120 damage, 120 HP, I mean. No one really went on you, but if someone had gone in with the monkey, like, what do they have? A single Jankrat shot could have killed you. Echo stickies, echo beam. You could have died pretty easily here. Because you overexpose yourself. Of course, I'll be honest, the enemy is obviously not thinking about you. And they're just doing whatever they want. And you just kill the monkey who never looks back at you. You are low as well. You take the teleport to get away, which... Oh my god, no, don't come back. I was gonna say, which is good because they just died. And um, you just came back to the tire. Like, tire is right there to your left. Okay, you get out. Okay, good, good. It kills your Sumetra, you know what? It's fine. This is, again, not the best. Ideally, you would be on the high ground, but I'm okay with this. Like, again, you are in the open. <clears throat> if the Echo goes aggressive, Diva, Monkey, you don't have anything to do against it. Hi, Extreme Ass. You don't have anything to counter them here. You are just in the open. You are still in the open, still in the open. Please don't Dragon. Oh, well. Your team is dead. You have Symmetra. Mercy and you versus six people. Yeah, it's been a bit long time. Why are you using your dragon? Why did we like I'm fine with the wall? We used wall before people died. This dragon will not get you as much value as you need. And again, you end up frontlining, which is you know, you just die. Even when this happens, unless you are just dying trying to die on the point. Just don't get close, like, stay here, do damage, stay inside, do damage. Uh, of course, the fight was lost anyway, but you could have, like, maybe gotten a peg, saved your dragon, like, I'm, in, I'm especially because, because you, you used your dragon, you told me, I, I want to win this fight, right? Otherwise, you would have saved the dragon. So, if you really wanted, if you really thought you could win that fight, you shouldn't have gone to the point. I think you should have, like, I don't think that fight was terrible, I think you should have just... Going to the point and die to begin with, but you use a dragon. If you are going to use one of your ultimates, you need to try to get value out of those ultimates. You get a health pack. Monkey no leap means you're free for 6 seconds, but again, a lot of downtime without doing anything. Actually, this is short. What's this, by the way? I know you. I said corner picking earlier, but... You are actually going a little too slow, and again, I, I I know I keep harping back on you moving a little too slow, and it may just be because you are not bronze, but you are bronze, sorry, I mean, and you're not used to playing faster, but like, your shots are very slow, like, you take a shot, you charge it, you go back out, you don't even charge it all the way, 
You do it again. You do it again. There's no shards of the way. I need to stay monkey in the head. Good shot. But <clears throat> hopefully you see what I mean when I say that you're playing a little slowly. Um, no one's pressuring you and they don't have like a one shot kill on you. So rather than doing this, you can stay here. You can do this. Why? Because it will give you an open line of sight. If someone goes slow, you can pop your storm arrows and you can aim more rather than... Like what you're doing right now is basically corner picking with the high ground. You're going out, going in, going out, going in, which is really good. But you don't have to do it right now because you can just do this, which gives you more time to aim your shots. Because right now, when you go out, you actually have no idea where the enemy is. You can kind of see him a little bit. So you have maybe an idea that the monkey will be somewhere around here from your previous shot. But yeah, this is not ideal. Still is fine. Like, I'm not going to harp on that. Your position here is good. Um, you haven't wasted some arrows at the random targets yet. So overall, I think you're playing pretty solid on this point. If they don't deal with you, they either have to run away your run over your team, sorry. Or just actually deal with you. Yeah, there you go. Echo comes to you. Hey, look at that. You wasted all of your storm rounds in a random attempt to hit the Echo. Last fight looks like. You got out. Which I'm kind of okay with. Like, I'm not going to say stay here when your team is dead. But at least like try to take a better position like over here. So you can maybe get a few shots in. You have a mercy. And your team is coming back. If Echo tries to dive you all the way here. You can just try to kill her. And your team will be able to help you. So the children can read is Here you do manage to take a couple of shots. But it's not going to be meaningful. And then you just walk into the stickies anyway. And you waste storm arrows anyway. My idea was just like, instead of like backing out here and getting little value, you can get more value from over here. Here you can hide from the Echo and shoot at the team. If the Echo tries to dive you, you can do this. You can even do this, depending on which side she ends up. Or you can go and get the Mega. You can just about cover and positioning. Not a big deal though, like that's just not a big deal. You're gonna try on the payload and oh my god, this is unlucky. Not unlucky, like, you're just walking into the jungle spam, to be honest. Like... Of course you're gonna take damage. I'm surprised you don't die from the damage, even. Oh, please don't tell me you died to, you died to grab dragons. Uh, this one actually may be good time, properly timed, and may kill these people. Even with beat, it may still kill the people in the grab. Except it's a Moira, so Moira can probably just fade out. In fact, Moira should fade out. Oh, you just missed the dragon. You actually missed the dragon. Where are you aiming? Aim it at the grab. You can, like, even now you can still fix it, by the way. You can aim it after pressing Q, so long as you do it before you shoot the arrow. You just, you just miss it. You just barely miss it. You're getting a tiny bit of damage, but it's not as much damage as you should. And you just die because you have very low HP because, again, they have a jungle so they can just spam you out. Taking this position would have been pretty good. Like, how's jungle is going to spam you here? Uh, but yeah, you have... Uh, that's unfortunate. Do you guys lose this? Oh my god, you guys, looks like you guys actually lose this. Get out, get out, get out. Again, this position is really good for you. You have cover. You're gonna tell me this is not a lot of cover. No, but you can do this and you're safe. And if people are below you, you can do this and you're safe. I don't expect people to be below you because they only have to get here. 
Like this, you are just exposing yourself. Your children is dead, your Saga is dead, they just never regrouped. I'm going, I guess that's why you died, that you just never regroup on this point. And they just push with ultimates and win. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Again, the Storm Rouse could use into the Diva mech, then you die to the Baby Diva, which honestly, I don't expect you to be able to kill a Baby Diva. Her hitbox is really good, like very small. Okay, but overall, what I want you to work on, and I said this earlier, but I'll say it again, is... Oh, hey, look at this. Blue backdrop for the rosy red salmon pink. Thank you. Your positioning needs work. Position. Pink. Play with high ground, but with cover. These are very important. Um, as for your mechanics, I think where you can improve the most without just raw aim improvement because you can always just improve on your raw aim and get better that way. That way. Mechanics. Uh, stop wasting your storm arrows. And for your game sense. Work on your awareness. Look around you more. Uh, try to notice things on the screen. Don't just go for things because you see them. But don't just like assume things because you see them or you don't. Actually look for them. Like you didn't notice an echo, a junk rat. It's, there, was, there were a lot of instances where you could have either seen or heard someone. Which would have probably made you change your course of action. Like I don't feel like you're tunnel visioning a lot. Like you're going, oh. I feel like you are going, oh, there's an Orisa shield over there. I'm going to shoot at the Orisa shield. I don't even see the echo next to me because I'm too focused shooting at the Orisa shield, right? Okay, so those are the big ones I think. Don't try to work on them all at once. Try to improve on them one by one because otherwise your attention will be very split. If you try to focus on too many things at once, you will lose your attention. That allows you to do like good shots and make good decisions, etc. So I don't know why I put etc on the screen. <laughs> um, the idea is work on them one by one. I would definitely start with your awareness because you, you not noticing the echo right next to you is a problem. After that, uh, probably your positioning, taking safer positions, taking high ground, using cover will help you a lot. And after that, your storm arrows. I've already shown you how to more or less um, get more value out of storm arrows by just using it for cleanup or using it to bolt tanks. But I haven't shown you is what I mean by corner picking. Which, again, you've done a little bit of it, especially on the high ground where I pointed it out at the end. But, like, you can use your storm arrows to find enemies, charge a shot, pick out shoot, pick out shoot. I'm not... Sorry, I'm looking at the chat. But... That's a general idea, right? Like, you can be like, okay, I'm holding this corner. This is my corner. Going to use Storm Arrow to know where the enemy is. The enemy is there. I can aim at the enemy. Aim at the enemy. Oh, there's one over here as well. Aim at the enemy. And you only have to go out to shoot your actual arrow. Which decreases the amount of time you can be shot. Like, the only time you can be shot is when you pick out to shoot and then come back in. Pick out to shoot. Come back in. I missed that one, but there you go. And because you have information by your storm arrow, or just your team telling you where they are, you can be like, okay, I know they are more or less over there. I'm going to wait for you to run out, right? You can be like, okay, I know the enemy is over there, more or less. I pick out, aim, shoot. Right, pick out, aim, shoot. Aim, shoot. Aim, shoot. Aim, shoot. Aim, shoot. You don't have to expose yourself on the time where the your arrow is charging. Wait until your arrow is fully charged, then pick out, shoot, come back in, charge your arrow, pick out, shoot, I missed that one, shoot, come back in, pick out, shoot, pick out, shoot, pick out, shoot, right? Simple. And again, you can use your sonic arrow to scout for information, which allows you to be faster, because you know where they are already. Right? Okay. Hopefully that helps. As for dragons, your dragons have been okay for your rank. 
<clears throat> stop using them if the fight is lost. Don't use any ultimate if your team is three or four people down. In general, but yeah, hopefully, again, <clears throat> use Stormhouse for cleanup. Don't use it for like, oh, I'm going to spam randomly at the enemy and get a lot of kills. Because it just, just doesn't work that way. Unless the enemy is like, unless the enemy is so low that you can kill him with a single Storm Arrows, don't go for it. Because you're, a single shot, that's 125 from your from your bow. And you have the option of headshotting as well, which, you know, will just kill them. So your single arrow can get you more value than randomly spamming the Storm Arrows and hoping that more of them will hit than not. Hopefully that's uh, good enough for you. I'll take a three or four minute break and I'll be right back, chat. See you soon.